In the meantime, uh, my name is Tom Yamro, and yeah. I've written a few Bigfoot songs, so I'd like to entertain you. This one's called The Battle of Alberto. Oh, yeah. Well, they've all been out camping. It's a fun place to go. Some go in groups, some go alone. Some go to the mountains, some even camp in the snow. Oh, but no one's had a camp trip like old Alberto. Well, he took a vacation to this prospect of the goal. He rode the boat to Tobin and left. It was a good place he was told. His Indian guy warned him about the Sasquatch. And I'm really nervous, they made me drink too much scotch. When I went hiking into the woods, and for three days all was fine. Day four came along, and things began to unwind. His backpack was ransacked, he lost his flower and prunes. He'd been waiting for his critter, by the light of the moon. Well, now he waited and waited, but his eyelids lay closed. He was snatched up in his sleeping bag with a sealed Albert nose. He woke up in a bundle he couldn't grab for his knife. The Albert Osman was in for the ride of his life. Hey, Albert, oh, Albert, what did you see? Them Sasquatch made you one of the family. Albert, oh, Albert, what do you say? You not only saw Sasquatch. You got carried away. This is ours. Please. He was carried up and over. Three ridges it seemed. If he wasn't in such pain, he would have thought it was a dream. He got dumped in a heap, and he rolled to a stop. And when he opened his eyes, well, his jaw had just dropped. There standing before him was a family of four. And no, my dear friends, it wasn't the family next door. It was four hairy giants, and they gave off a smell. Now what Osman had been carried to where the Sasquatch did dwell. When he was trapped in a small valley, he made the best of his stay. He watched the dad sit around while the kids, they did play. They had a bed of moss and leaves, he had his knapsack and boots. He dined on cold hash, and they dined on sweet roots. Well, they were very much like us, except they were covered in hair. But their feet, hands, and fingernails did rightly compare. The swore it was wild men, they didn't use language or tools. Not these were the Sasquatch, they didn't fit any rules. Them Sasquatch made you one of the family. Albert, oh, Albert, what do you say? You not only saw Sasquatch, you got carried away. Well, this went on for six days, and Albert said that's enough. You can make the big one sick by feeding him snuff. Well, he rolled in the can, and Daddy B ate it all. Well, Albert grabbed up his things and ran for that hole in the wall. When well, I shot over the mama, he tried to halt his escape. He ran as fast as he could to get free from them apes. Well, after two days, he found some waters. They said, what happened to you? Well, he thought about telling them they never believed it was true. So Albert went home, t'was 1924. He kept that tale to himself for 30 years or more. And then he talked to John Green, God has weak there in hell. He made a swear for the judge, it was the truth he did tell. Well, he went looking for some gold to enrich his life. But when he almost ended up with a hairy Bigfoot wife, so if you go out here, don't know where he did go, or you might just stand up like old Alberto. Oh, Alberto, Albert, what did you see? Them Sasquatch made you one of the family. Alberto, Albert, what do you say? You not only saw Sasquatch, you got carried away. Sasquatch made you one of the 
and uh, also the veterinarian from the Federal Primate Center at the University of Washington, who, who was also the uh, veterinarian for the big apes of the Seattle Zoo. And these two experts questioned us from half an afternoon. And then we went to coffee afterwards. They said, well, if he didn't have this experience, he must have had a period in his life when he really had an opportunity to observe great apes because he had never said anything that didn't make sense. And, um, so that's one side of the picture. The other side is that nobody, including myself, has been able to relate the actual geography where he said he went into the bush to the location where he went out of it. The, the story would require this creature who would carry him up, up and down over several mountain ranges in the course of part of the night. So, you know. Oh, and the other, the other significant thing is that Osman wasn't alone in this, but he was going totally against the uh, common understanding of Sasquatch, which was well known in this area, and uh, was supposed to be a, a giant Indian with long hair, where he's you know, describing something totally different. And, uh, there's just so much detail in what he says, I can't go very far into it, but I don't know, and I don't think we will ever know, but that he was able to construct a, a detailed picture that through the years either that's what these things are or everybody since has been caught in the Yes? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah, there's uh, been a lot of uh, discrepancies in regards to uh, reports for his story <laughs> John, can you describe uh, your first viewing of the Patterson Gimlin film and uh, the kind of excitement there was surrounding that? And then also, uh, this next year when you went down to film with the comparison movie you made, could you talk a bit 